today is, all, is going to be all about mistakes. And one of the, I guess, something odd about statistics is it really is not an exact science. And so with significance tests, even though we might do everything right, all the conditions are being checked, everything looks good, you come to a conclusion, you still might be rejecting something that shouldn't be rejected, and you might be failing to reject something that you should be rejecting. And so when that comes into play, we have these, these errors that are made. So the first type of error um, is a type 1 error. And a type 1 error occurs when you reject the null hypothesis but the null hypothesis is true. Okay. Now I have a, an acronym of course that I use to remember what you know what a type 1 error and it's actually root. So R O O T and here's how it works. A type 1 error occurs when you reject H O that's hence the O but the H O is true. Okay so reject HO, but HO is true. That's how you're going to remember what a type 1 error is. And the probability of a type 1 error is something that we're interested in. So let's take a look at a curve. If you have, okay, so if you're making a type 1 error, here's what's happening. You have your HO that might be mu, it might be pi, okay, and that's what's going to set the middle. And then we're here, and we come up with this p value, right, and, you know, we shade to the right if we're, if we're doing that, and this is the sample, so it might be your mean or your, it might be your p hat, depending on what variables we're using. So a type 1 error is when we are rejecting HO, but HO is true. So the question I have for you is where on this curve would we be rejecting HO? And we reject um, when alpha is, when the p-value is less than alpha. And so you would be rejecting in this region. If this is a really small number, you would be rejecting the null hypothesis. So this number is set by what alpha is. So it turns out that, and this is where you'd be making a type 1 error, you'd be rejecting something, you'd be over here when you should be getting areas, you know, somewhere over here telling you not to reject. So the probability of type 1 error is pretty easy. It's equal to alpha. Okay, and that one I think is pretty easy to understand. You'd be rejecting something, you'd be over here. So whatever you set alpha to, that gives you the probability of making a type 1 error. Okay, now a type 2 error. Let's move this guy up. So a type 2 error is when you fail to reject the null, I don't know what that is, HO, the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is true. And my acronym for a type 2 error is FROAT. So root and FROAT. So the type 2 error, to help you remember that, is when you fail 
to reject HO, that's like null hypothesis, when the alternative hypothesis, HA, hence the A, is true. So root and froat. Now type 2 error is a little harder to understand, but let me do my best. Um, so here's what's happening when you're making a type 2 error. You start with your curve. Turn that off. You start with your curve. And HO would go right here. And this would be your mu and your pi. You know, the Greek letters would set that. And this would be X bar or P hat. Whatever the sample is would go on the curve. And when you're making a type 2 error, you're failing to reject the null hypothesis. So what that means is that you'd actually be somewhere in this region. Because if your p-value is large, you know, if you'd be pagaphering. If it p is greater than alpha, you know, so that would give you a large probability here, you would be failing to reject. When in fact, the true thing, <laughs> you'd be failing to reject something that you should be rejecting. So you'd be, it's kind of weird because you'd think this was the true curve because you're failing to reject the null hypothesis, when in fact there's actually some other curve that has the true mu or pi. And so you're in this region when you should be over here. And so when you look at this, this is where alpha would be, right here. And this is what we call this whole region right here. This is called beta. So the probability of a type 2 error is actually equal to beta. And it's really weird to see that because what you have here is, um, you know, it's hard to see that because you're, you're supposed to be in, in this region, or this is where you think you're supposed to be, when in fact there's some other curve that has the true center of the distribution, which is what you're looking for. And so it's that overlap of where you are and where the other true curve is that we call beta, and that's the probability of making a type 2 error. So root and froat, and then we have to just remember how do we make a type 2 error. So there's this other thing that we have to look into, which is called power. So let me put this down here. Power is the probability that a test correctly rejects a false null hypothesis. So what we want high power. I mean that's what we set out to do. If something's false, we want our significance test to recognize that and reject the null hypothesis. So Power is that probability that a test will correctly, and we want high probability of that happening. We want high power. So power, and let me actually draw this curve again, because that'll help us see. So here's your H, L, mu, or pi, whatever's that. And here's the other curve, which is the true curve. And we would say, like, this is alpha right here, and a type 2 error comes from beta. So you're in this region when you're really supposed to be on this curve, but you're still thinking this curve is correct, and that's when you're making a type 2 error. So power is actually equal to 1 minus beta. And so if you notice, this is beta. Power is 
If you if this whole curve is equal to one and you take one minus beta, this is where power is. So in order for a a um a significance has to have high power, we want this region to be as high as possible, as large as possible. Okay, so power is equal to 1 minus beta. So there are a couple ways to raise power. How to increase power. And at this point in time, I usually throw this back at the students and Sometimes there's some awkward silence and we, you know, and I kind of wait. And usually we, we come up with three, the three ways to increase power. I don't know why I did one, three. So we're going to go in order. One, two, three. Okay, so how do we increase power? Well, the number one way is the number one fix for pretty much everything in AP statistics is increase your sample size. Because if you increase the sample size, these curves now become taller and skinnier with less variability. And what you'll notice, if this is alpha, this is beta, you'll notice that this area is quite a bit larger where your beta is a lot smaller. So increasing sample size of your sampling distributions will make the variability smaller, which will then increase your probability of, of rejecting a false null hypothesis. Okay, the second one is, if you, and you, it's kind of a visual here. What's another, something that we have control over that if we increased this, power would also increase. And if you notice this, and it's, it's, you know, it might be hard to see, but if we could increase alpha, if we could push this little alpha over, wouldn't the beta become smaller and the power would become, you know, this area would become larger if we could just move that line over? So another way is to increase alpha. But there's a problem with that. What's the problem with increasing alpha? This is where I wait and wait and maybe wait a little too long, but um, the problem with increasing alpha, as you just learned, will increase the probability of making a type 1 error. So, you know, it'd be great, like, oh, let's make alpha 15%. Well, if you do that, you're going to be rejecting a lot of things that you shouldn't be rejecting. So unfortunately, there's a balance here where we could increase alpha, but this will increase the probability of a type 1 error. So, you know, that's us. Again, you can only do alpha too much, and then you'd just be making a bunch of type 1 errors. Now, the last way to increase power, and this is a little weird too, and not, not so much that you have control over, is when I look at these car, that you know, here's your mu, here's your x bar, here's your pi and p hat. If we could, I wish I could like pick it up, but if I could just take these two curves and push them further apart, you would see that this area would get a lot larger because now the overlap would be smaller. So you'd like, you would push those apart. Well, the only way that can do that is if you can increase the, um, oh, I'm sorry, this is actually, this is where your X bar and this is where your P hat is. So if you could, if you could push um, your, your sample and the population parameter, if they were really far apart, you would have high power. So you would, we, call, we would say we increase the distance between the sample proportion, or the sample mean, the sample proportion, so between the sample and the population parameter. Okay, so if we could push this, if we could push these curves further apart, you would find that this area would get larger because, you know, your beta would get smaller. So those are the ways to increase power. Now, 
Um, I agree this is somewhat of a confusing thing to understand um, and you know the visual hopefully helps but you know I, I know it, it is definitely a weird a weird concept to understand but here's really what you need to take from this okay you need to know what a type 1 error is and hopefully the root is going to help you okay you need to know what's the probability of making a type 1 error and that's equal to L okay you need to know what a type 2 error is and hopefully FROAT is going to help you remember that so when you fail to reject the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is actually true okay so fail to reject HO when HA is true you need to know that the probability of a type 2 error is equal to beta okay power is the probability that a test correctly rejects a false hy null hypothesis you want to know how we calculate power 1 minus beta and you want to know the three ways to increase power Usually I see this concept, the, um, you know, what we're talking about, I usually see these showing up in multiple choice questions. Um, you know, they might give you an alpha or a beta and ask you what's power, or they might compare two distributions and say, who has a higher power, you know, and, and you would look for the one that has the larger sample size and an alpha that's... Um, that's smaller or bigger bigger would increase power so that you know these questions tend to show up in multiple choice so you don't necessarily have to truly understand you know the visual on this hopefully that helps come up with these but you do have to know like okay this is a type 1 error this is a type 2 error and here is power and here's how we increase power so I'm going to stop this to make sure that everything's recorded and then I'm going to do a couple examples of type 1 and type 2 errors with you. So stay tuned.